Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Lime 3DS emulator on your Mac. So, as I've just said, it allows you to emulate Nintendo 3DS games. I just want to say this video does not condone piracy, it is for educational purposes only. You should always, you know, legally acquire all ROMs and any keys that you install for the emulator. Okay, so now what you want to do is open up your web browser, search for Lime 3DS. Go to the GitHub page, the GitHub IO, and go to releases, and that will take you to the GitHub page. But if you are, if you are, let's say, directly on the GitHub page here, you go to releases, just click releases, it'll show you all of them, get the latest one, or the one that says latest there. You don't want any sort of experimental ones. And then scroll down, click Mac OS. This will download the file. I've already got it downloaded, or I did, or I download. And the the next thing that we'll need is let's see, unless it's uh, yeah. So you need some key files. They're not one hundred percent required. If your game is decrypted, you won't need the AES underscore keys dot txt file. If your games are encrypted, however, you will need those key files for legal reasons. I cannot show you where to get those files from, but. If you Google it, you will find them. They're not hard to find. And you will also need some ROM files. I have .3ds you know, files that are decrypted. So I don't even need the AES key, but I'll show you how to use them anyway. And now, just open up your finder. Go to Downloads, and here's Lime 3ds. Double click. And now, we are just interested in Lime 3ds-GUI. Drag it onto Applications. That's installed. Now we can actually launch it up. But before we do, let me show you my game, .3ds. I had a zip file, double click it, and then you get the game. I recommend organizing this as well. So copy the game. I put in documents, put in a folder called ROM. So create a folder here, create a folder called 3ds, and then just put it over here. Now just launch up line 3ds. And if this appears, that's fine. Click OK. You go to your settings. System settings, you go to privacy and security. You can always search for it here if you can't see it. Scroll down and it says Lime 3DS GUI was blocked. Fine, click open anyway. You need to enter your password. I'll use Touch ID. Click open on this, and that's it. It has now launched. And now let's add the game folder that we added our game to. So just double click, go to documents. You want to go to ROM 3DS. Click open, there we go. Now, let me show you the settings on Lime 3DS. You go to preferences. Most of these you can leave as default. Um, most of these you won't even really need to modify pretty much ever, but it's always good to know what, you know, I'll say the important ones are. Now, I think these are, you know, a couple of cool ones. Pause emulation when in background, that's really nice. So if you switch to another application, you'll pause it. You'll mute audio when also in background as well. And, you know, the region, Auto select is my recommended one. And for where all of these ones can leave in system, you want to make sure enable new 3DS mode is enabled. If you have some 3GX you know, plugins for modding, you can use that. Camera, you can set the camera as well. For certain games, some storage you can leave. For graphics, you have the internal resolution will be default and native. I'd already played this as a setting file. But you'll, by default, it will be native. And Increasing the internal resolution makes the game look sharper. My thing, okay, let's just whack it up to 10x. No, slow down, slow down, cowboy. The thing is, increasing the internal resolution does come at the, you know, at a performance hit, potentially. So depending on how new your Mac is and how powerful it is, you might not be able to increase it that much compared to, you know, somebody else. So my recommendation, I know a lot of YouTubers that do it, say just put it on 6x, put it on 10x, that's you know close to the native resolution or something along those rubbish lines. No, do native, make sure it's working, then come back and then change it. You can even change it whilst you're playing the game. That's not a problem. And if you want to set you know 3D mode, you can do that right here. Remember 3DS had you know 3D. In layout you can choose how you want it to appear because remember 3DS had two screens. So default, single screen, large screen, which is the top screen is large and then there's like a small one, side by side, separate windows, hybrid screen, you can, do a, you can even do a custom layout. It is pretty darn cool. But again, that's totally up to you. 
In advanced, for the graphics API, you want to select Vulkan if that's an option. If not, do OpenGL. But you want to be Vulkan or OpenGL, not software. That's not the best performance, but Vulkan is the best one. Again, all of this, just leave as default. But one thing you want to definitely make sure is enabled is enable shader JIT, which is just in time compilation. And this basically improves performance. In audio, you want to make sure the output type is auto. You can select another one if you really want to, but make sure it's not none. I've had that before. I've downloaded the emulator. It's not working. The audio is not working. Then I go in. For some reason, the, the source or the type isn't, you know, correct select selected correctly so for the output device if you put auto it defaults to whatever your system default is but you might not want that you might want a separate one you can change that here same with here make sure there's something selected for input type of mic and put an input device as well if you want to change it for controls this is where you can map your controls this is one of the great things about emulators is custom control schemes and if you click that you can type in like t that's already a key and I'm trying to type in y there we go and that's how you change it very very simple i'm going to restore defaults because what i'm going to do is have separate videos covering how you can actually set up playstation 4 playstation 5 switch controllers etc xbox controller last thing i want to show you you can there's hot keys as well you can check out it's pretty cool but is the profiles if you click new you can name a profile and then using the drop down <coughs> you can select your profile the benefit of this you can have different configurations for different games or different users click ok and that, that's pretty much it there's some you know, settings here as well like loading a file directly installing cia file if you have that and um, but if you go to open line 3ds and in here, it'll, it won't be Lime, it'll be a Citra folder. Remember, it is a fork of Citra. Go to Sys Data. You won't have your AES, AES keys here. You won't have that. But that's where you want to put it. So let's copy and paste it here. And then, good to launch our game. So if you double click. But before I do that, let me show you one other thing. If I right click, if I go to Properties, here, you can set the properties that, we were, that I was already showing you. But you can make it specific for that game so if you know that the new super mario brothers it works really good at 10x but then maybe there's another game maybe like a zelda game that might only work at 7x you know in the performance level that you want for your system you can change that game specific you can also enable cheats to do that go to cheats click add cheat you name it and then you put the codes and then you save it but i'll delete it click OK and now that's it if I double click the game will launch because it's you know 3ds games are lightweight it doesn't take much to run them you mo you should be able to run them very smoothly plus you should be able to <coughs> you will they will load very fast as well click new game And I'm just going to load the state because this will take me directly into the gameplay. Nope, oh, that didn't work. Ah, I know why that didn't work. Because I actually created that state. Let me click OK. Created that state with Citra 3DS. Should have done a separate video, I did not Lime 3DS. So there's been of. Yeah, it's not fully working. Okay, so. Let me explain some settings here. So like the main one is the emulation. So you can pause, stop and restart. You can configure the current game. In view, you can change the layers right here. Those are the two main ones. The other thing is load and save states. So let me show you loading and save states. I will get into the game and I will demonstrate that with an actual state that I've created in Lime 3DS. So I'm just gonna let this, you know, go through the cutscene. And once that does, uh, that, I'm just going to go through the view, show you the different layouts. So the black here is where the 
bottom screen will appear. Custom layout as well, rotate upright, swap screen, etc. I prefer default. Okay, now I can launch up the game. So by default, my keyboard is mapped, but you can connect a game controller as well. And here we go. Have the game working, working really, really well. Almost disappeared. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you now is save states. If we go to emulation, go save state, or click slot two, that's saved. Now, let me show you how that works. If I click stop, launch the game up, you'll notice that it is launching the game up from start, which is what a real console would do. If I go to emulation, load state, it takes me directly to that point in the game where it was saved. Two main advantages of this. One, it means you're not reliant on the built-in save system. That means you can just save wherever. You don't know where this built-in save system is going to you know, allow you to save. Number two, even the built-in save system in the game, you still need to go through this, you know, the start of the game, the, you know, like the intro stuff to be able to access it. This is straight away. Within like a couple of seconds, you're, you're back where you was. It's fantastic and you can have different save states as well so different players different areas you want to check out and that's pretty much it so you can increase the resolution so if i go to screen layout i'll go to single screen you see mario that is the main thing and the coins they're looking pretty low res so let me change that let me go to configure current game if we go to graphics actually we need to disable that you need to close the game there. If I go to graphics here, I can increase it. If I click OK, as you can see, Mario is looking a lot sharper. And that's it. That's how you set up Lime 3DS on your Mac to play 3DS games. You are welcome to stop the video right now. I am literally just going to have a bit of fun. Um, Mm. I'll play a bit of Mario. Uh, messed up there but as you can see it's working very well nice enjoyable experience that's how you set up the line 3ds emulator on your mac if you have any questions about keys roms or setting up or anything feel free to comment in the description down below if you liked the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one take care bye